G'day, I'm Scotty Tucker. Just wanted to talk about subsurface aeration systems. So the reason why we want to aerate dams is to actually stimulate uh, aerobic bacteria. In dams that are not aerated, you get that surface layer, uh, well not surface layer, it's about a metre deep or so, um, where you jump in and it's freezing cold once you get past that point. Well, it's not just temperature, it's also oxygen. And down the bottom, you get little or no oxygen. And what that means is that you have anaerobic species of bacteria that live in those conditions. And over time, a dam gets um, build up of duck crap, fish crap, leaf litter, anything organic that, that blows into the dam all forms down the bottom. And uh, under anaerobic conditions, that bacteria digests it or feeds off it very, very slowly. So in man-made water bodies, the, the muck generally builds up over time. Now, when you aerate and you get oxygen down the bottom, you shift the populations of bacteria from uh, anaerobic to aerobic, and the aerobic bacteria will break that waste down much, much faster. So instead of it building up over time, it'll decrease it over time. And why that's important is because that crap on the bottom is actually kind of like a compost fertiliser for algae and weed up above. So if you can clean that stuff up down the bottom, you're going to have less problems with weed and algae up above. Um, anaerobic bacteria also produce uh, hydrogen sulphide and methane. That's why they, uh, in, in non-aerated dams, you can get odour, especially if you're pumping it out and putting it out over your garden or irrigating. Um, you can get that really bad rotten egg smell. That's anaerobic bacteria. So when you aerate, you get rid of that really, really quickly. Uh, Aeration is really valuable for, for fish because that same principle with uh, the oxygen only being up the top means that the fish can generally only hang around up the top and that makes them easy pickings for birds. So there's, there's a few good reasons why you want to aerate a dam. Um, it's important that you get oxygen down the bottom. And in deeper dams, uh, that's where subsurface aeration systems are really valuable. Um, subsurface aeration is kind of like a big fish tank aerator, if you like. You have um, a shore-based air pump, and you have, uh, we normally use self-weighted air hose that, that drops down to the bottom and sinks down the bottom, so there's nothing floating around on the surface. And um, at the end of, their, uh, of, of the hose are air stations, which will have a various configuration and size of, of these discs that release um, millions and millions of little bubbles out from the bottom. And what they do is as they come out, they come out very, very small, about like half a mil. And as they um, come up to the surface, they get larger because the pressure reduces. And what you end up with is a vertical column of rising air bubbles. And there's a bit of gas exchange between the air and the water, but that's not mainly how they aerate. How they aerate is that that um, vertical rising column drags all the water from the surrounding area from the, um, from the bottom up to the top and then you get your gas exchange with the air and the water, goes around and then goes back down to the bottom again, so you get increased oxygen down the bottom. So that's essentially how, how subsurface aeration systems work. Um, because of that uh, rising bubble getting larger, if you've got deeper water, it will um, move, it will get much larger, and so you'll move more water. So this dam behind me that um, uh, we've stuck an aeration system in today is about seven metres deep. It's ideal, it's about three and a half acres. Um, so you really only need, you know, I don't know four or five um, air stations. Um, in this one, we've chucked in four. Um, but uh, if this same size dam was only a metre and a half deep, you might need eight, nine, ten air stations because you're not going to have that same amount of water movement because the bubbles don't get the chance to get as large, which means you don't move as much water. Um, some of the benefits, uh, pros and cons with subsurface aeration. Uh, one of the benefits is it uses uh, less power than other types of aerators, say surface aerators. Reason being is because you're pumping air, not water. So you don't need such a powerful force to move the water, uh, 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 to push the air compared to water. Uh, you also um, have no power in the water, which means that in swimming dams, uh, there's, there's no risk of, of, of ele electro electrocution, tongue twister. Uh, so yeah, they're great for swimming dams because there's no power in the water. Uh, also from, a, um, from an aesthetic point of view, it means that there's no, um, uh, there's no disturbance to the surface. So if you don't like the idea of, of having a, a fountain, an aerating fountain um, type of display on the surface, you want to try and keep the, the water body looking as natural as it can, uh, then that's where a subsurface system is a good system because it doesn't, all what you see on the water is just like a boil of, of, of breaking bubbles. So it's, um, uh, it's very discreet. Uh, also with subsurface systems, you can have them a good couple of hundred metres away from a power supply. Like if you've got 
um, or from the dam. So if your power supply is a couple hundred metres away from your dam, you'd have your air pump back there, you dig a shallow trench, because you're not trenching power, it doesn't have to be 600 mil deep. You just break the surface so that you don't um, run over air hoses with um, grass cutting equipment. But it means that you can run the, a, a, a hose from uh, the edge of the power, or where the power is, to the water's edge, then go into the water with the, uh, with the weighted air hose. So it's a, it's a lower cost option compared to solar um, equipment or wind generated equipment, which we, we, you still can do with, um, with subsurface systems if you don't have power anywhere near you. Um, but with, if you're in a couple hundred metres away, it's generally the, the, the lowest cost option to, um, uh, to, to aerate your dam. Um, cons with subsurface aeration, I'd say probably uh, the aesthetic thing, if you don't like aesthetics, uh, or if you, if you do like the aesthetic um, uh, display, you're not going to get that. Um, and also they, they don't put as much oxygen in the water as quick as what a surface aerator will. So if you had really bad conditions in summer and you found that your fish were gasping or, or potentially um, dying due to um, uh, fish kills in, in um, uh, weather events in, in summer, um, then you, your fish isn't going to have as great a refuge or as good a refuge as what it would if you had a surface aerator. Um, and also they're less intensive, so in more wastewater, um, uh, horticultural situations where you've got lots of runoff coming into dams, um, it won't have, it won't produce as much oxygen in the water um, or raise the DO as much as what a surface aerator would, which means that you won't get as much bacterial activity happening. So in more intense, uh, you know, densely or, or high density nutrient type of scenarios, you, you, you could be better with a surface aerator or the combination of the subsurface to bring it up in the surface aerator to literally aerate the crap out of it. Um, but that's probably about the only cons for, for subsurface. Um, for these sorts of environments, uh, your more sort of uh, natural, traditional sort of dam, they're a, they're a, great, um, uh, a great aeration uh, method.